Welcome everyone. We're gonna cover the stock market. We got some price action happening today. And the action today is very telling, I think, as to what's gonna happen. So I've been talking about the breakdowns in the uptrend line uh, on the most important sector, which is, which is uh, tech. Uh, at least the most important for the market. And that's because you have the five fang stocks that make up <clears throat> they make up huge uh, percentages of the S&P 500. Tech is 21 to, or to maybe 23% of the uh, S&P 500, so it's the largest sector, and you've got the five FANG stocks making up a huge portion of that. So we've, uh, let's get right into these charts, show you guys what's going on. What does today, today's, this morning's price action tell me? All right, we're gonna start out with the daily here again. I'm just going to keep re reiterating this because we're at the moment, we're at the point where people, you know, think people don't, a lot of people don't realize what's happening, uh, and by the time they realize, it's it's kind of too late, you know. That's this is why most people when they buy the buy stocks, they buy it after you know at the highs, and then when they sell, they panic sell at the lows. It's because they're not able to read the charts necessarily. Uh, prior to the move actually happening. They, they have to see that move actually staring them right in the face and then they wanna jump on board. And usually, from my perspective, that oftentimes is not the best time to enter a trade or potentially, um, you know, the end of the trade. So here's the uptrend in the daily chart on the cues. We can get rid of this line here. This this uptrend line right here, and this is the line that has been the most important. We'll mark it out in green right here. This line has been the most important, uh, really, for the entire trend of 2020. This this huge monster rally that we've had in 2020 has really been led by tech, has been led by the Fang stocks within the tech sector, and has um, you know just been a steady uptrend the entire time. Well, we broke that uptrend. Uh, a couple days ago, we about two weeks ago now. Here's the breakdown right here. So this is where a lot of bulls or people that aren't charting or te using technical analysis think that this is potentially just another buy the dip moment, just like all the other dips that we've had throughout the entire rally. They see this as just another dip uh, and it's time to load up and buy. Uh, and that often just you know, that, that comes with recency bias. People believe that because the market's been uptrending, it's gonna to continue to uptrend, Things, nothing's changed. But something did change back here because the trend broke. We broke the trend and we back tested right here and now we're failing. And you can see where we're, we're trading at today. So don't let this morning's price action fool you. Um, what I actually did personally is at the open, I covered my short in triple Qs. I wrote it up and then re-entered it at about 273 is where I picked, grabbed it again. Oh, you know, yeah, well, let me check my trading platform. 271.46 is where I uh, reshorted it. And, um, you know, so far looks good. Now, the reason why I was expecting this to continue to the downside, one, we opened right at support. So when you open at support, you're gonna have buyers step in and try to buy, buy that, you know, you buy it support, that makes sense. So, you know, I figured an, a morning pop, but again, the morning pop is just what you're gonna see on the hourly. When it comes to the daily, we've got big breakdowns of trends. There's, there's more happening here on the daily chart showing you that the major trend, even though you'll have maybe bounces at support throughout the intraday trading, uh, the major trend is to the downside. So. We've got, you know, I think we're heading lower, probably heading down. Um, you know, again, we have this uptrend line. Let me get rid of these here. Um, these are potential targets. I like, uh, you know, probably this one, 250, uh, 254. It's about 254.50 um, as a potential profit target um, on this trade. Again, this trade, if I go back and look, I entered this trade right here on the breakdown of this, I, I just erased it, but we had this uptrend line right here. I entered the trade right here up at 297. So that trade is now, you know, from when I entered, we are, you know, about 10%, nine and a half percent profitable. And I think we're heading down to this, you know, on the weekly we have 
trend line support right here on this price channel. This goes back to 2008, uh, and this is the price channel. So this was resistance. We overshot that. As I zoom in, you can see we overshot that. So we maybe we'll get a reaction right there, uh, 259 uh, area. And that's what I have right now on, on Qs and tech. Uh, if we undercut the lows here at this two, it's about 267.50, 268, somewhere right in there. If we undercut those lows and close, get an hourly close, I think it, it's you know extremely high probability that we're gonna continue to the downside. Um, if it can hold, if it can hold this uh, 268, uh, then we potentially still have in play, it could still bounce up and do a kickback rally all the way up here. So, you know, in the short term, could easily go up. I think it's heading down, and that's because the daily chart. The daily chart tells me we had a break in trend, a little bit of a flagging action right here, starting to break. We'll see the impulsive breakdown, um, and we should get some sort of a move like this to the downside. Maybe that sets us up for you know 250, 248, some kind of a move to the downside like that. So that's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm expecting, <clears throat> and that's how I'm positioned. Here's Tesla. I know a lot of people are interested in Tesla. So I'm short Tesla right now. Uh, I don't think this thing's going higher. Um, <clears throat> but the thing is, you've got a, it's a low float stock. So there's not a lot of stock out there. It's relatively low float. So you get, you know, if you get a bunch of retail people buying Tesla on a low float stock, they can hang, hold the thing up there for a while. But eventually you're gonna get institutional sellers coming in and selling and selling their positions to retail, that only goes so long before the selling kind of takes hold. And what I think is in play is again, what I put out in the video the other day, this kind of bubble top formation where you get the impulsive top, the euphoria move. And this was definitely a euphoria move. I heard about it from a lot of friends and family about how Tesla was so awesome and amazing and it's the future. and. Yeah, whatever, it might be the future, but the reality is is that that's euphoria. And so <clears throat> then we get the break and then we get the return to normal. That's what this bounce I think is, the return to normal bounce. Like, okay, it's, you know, we're, we're heading back to the good times, the euphoria is coming back. And then we get the impulsive breakdown and, and you know, the big sell off. So that's what I think is hap gonna happen in Tesla. I'm targeting 244. Uh, you know about 245 and two, uh, 223 as kind of the first profit targets and then we'll see um, you know potentially down to this 133 and again this is what it looks like when you break trend here's Adobe this was the trend line that that we were rocking up we broke you do a back test and now you start to set the new trend which should be to the downside now the trend doesn't have to be the, to the downside, could be a sideways trend, but I'd expect at least some sideways price action, sideways to down. So for me, there's no reason to, there would be no reason to be long if you're you know, gonna go sideways to down. Um, now, yeah, after you go sideways, maybe you, there's a continuation to the upside, but um, for now, to me, the risk is to the downside. XOM is kind of interesting here. We've got this, on the hourly, we've got this downward price channel right here, just recently, and you can see we've been just kind of rolling down, and we just recently broke and did a back test. So here's the breakout, and we had a back test and kind of holding in the area. I'm, I'm waiting to see if there's any more further upside. Here's the daily chart. You can see the breakout and then maybe a back test on the daily. So this might be, you know, this might be a reversal area or an area to potentially go long on XOM. Um, and the my first target on this one would probably be a move or a back test of this breakdown trend line support up around 41. So from there, you know, from where we're at, that's a you know 10 percent, nine nine percent trade, not a bad trade if that if that plays out. So I'm watching that to see how today plays out. I don't like the price action in the queues, and <clears throat> queues is going to drag down spy. Uh, which you know could easily drag down XOM. Um, XOM was just booted out of the Dow Jones, though I believe. So it's not indexed in the Dow. So that helps if you know if the Dow's selling off due to the the tech sector selling off or some of the other stocks selling off. Maybe 
XOM isn't doesn't sell it as hard. Okay, let's look at Fang stocks now. Does this look like a bullish chart to you? I have this trend line marked out. Um, you can see here on the hourly. <clears throat> so it's a flag. You know, basically here's what I was saying was going to happen, or what I thought was going to happen is you have this flag pull, and then you have this flag right here, and then you break down or resume the 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 flag. That's a that's a bear flag pattern, um, and that targets us down around this gap. I think around this 96, 97 area. Um, so far, looks like it's uh, head that, headed that way. If I look at the daily here, if the day closes down here, this is a close, you know, pretty much, I mean, it's a bearish close basically if it closed down here or lower. So it definitely looks like we're breaking down. Um, if they can recover it, then perhaps it's just a whipsaw and this is just, you know, uh, kind of a bear trap and then it's gonna bounce, but Again, on the daily, we got to wait for the close. As of right now, I think this looks bearish. Amazon, again, on the daily. And this is why you want to put a heavier weighting on the daily than the hourly. The daily can be more of your compass as you're trying to, you know, figure out where the next tide is going to be at. You know, the daily is a good uh, time frame. Uh, and the weekly, obviously, is, you know, a very strong time frame. But the daily will give you a little bit more granular, uh, a more granular read on the markets. Um, the weeklies usually have a pretty wide range where the dailies, you know, not, not as much. So again, daily, you can see here, this is impulsive, uh, what the action that we've had today, because you've got a, a gap down and there's, you know, the buyer stepped in just barely, I think at the open probably. And you can see the selling is continuing. It's continuing as I speak. So there's, a, it's trapped the money basically. Anybody who bought the dip, if I go to the daily, you know, like I was saying, I, I was expecting on this first drop uh, in, a, in a previous video that we would have some dip buyers would come in and buy because you've had such a relentless uptrend that they're not going to see the trend line. They, there's just dip buyers that are programmed to buy every dip. And so you get the dip, they buy, you get a little pop. And then, um, you know, but now they, you know, and then they started to fade. They thought, oh, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But then you gap down and you trap them in that trade. So that that dip has been trapped now, um, all that all that bullish money. And now you would expect to see, you know, more selling. And then these people will start to sell out. You know, they'll start to stop out. The dip buyers will start stopping out. And that will further uh, add to the selling pressure. Uh, Microsoft, same thing, basically, gap down. Did recover it a little bit, but still holding down there. Microsoft looks a lot like Apple. So a daily close, a bearish daily close would be, would you know, a nice red candle close on the daily chart should be pretty bearish and set this thing up for more downside price action. Here's gold. Gold continues to battle. So this is why I've been... Uh, not confident on gold because the chart has it, it's a battle right now it's a battleground between bears and bulls and you can see here that we've just been coiling uh, inside of this pennant someone corrected me and yeah I, I think I said it was a asymmetrical triangle but it, it, it's a pennant um, but the point is is that it's been coiling um, and it has uh, reached the apex, so we don't know which way it's going to break. It, it could break up, could break down. It, you know, I don't know. I think it's going to break down, um, but again, and the dollar's been choppy too. The dollar's been kind of breaking sideways up and down. So, you know, I, I think it's going to break down, and that really comes down to the fact that I think the markets are going to break down a little bit more, and the dollar will catch a little bit of a flight to safety bid. Uh, and then gold should sell off because of that. But again, I think any sell off down to 1790, going back to gold bullion, uh, going back to 1790, I think that's your area of support. That's pretty solid support. That's where I'm looking to buy at. Um, and so that's what I'm looking for. Netflix here, you've got uptrend line, break and trend back here on the daily back test and we're starting to fail so that that's the common theme in most of these tech stocks you had the break in trend you had a back test of that trend line and now you're starting to fail so to me looks like we're starting the next downtrend um, or, or sideways action could we could be just consolidating and going sideways uh, but 
you know, sideways to down is not an area that I'd want to be long. So that's what I'm trying to point out. Uh, to me, it looks like good shorts across the board. Now, you know, obviously the best object objective areas were to short back here at, at resistance. And that's where I always try to point out in my videos when I see something right at resistance, I try to point it out that this is a good area to short. Um, but it's hard for people, I understand, to short when things are moving up. Uh, you know, it's hard for them to go against what they see right there in front of them, trying to anticipate the next move. And that's what I try to point out in these videos. That That's my trading style is I'm trying to, you know, I, you know, like today, this day on Netflix, it was up 10% and I would have been taking a short, you know, right up here when most people would be jumping around happy that they just made 10%. That would, I would be looking that as the end of that move and the next move will be to the downside and that's kind of how I, I continue to trade so I'll continue to try to point those out to everyone um, and look for any trade ideas uh, and then wrap it up I do want to cover uh, a subscriber wanted me to point out mRNA Moderna so let's point this out I did chart it up could be a breakout I see what they're talking about so here's your mar you know this is your March lows you did have a breakdown and you had this little price channel right here on the daily. It broke to the downside right here, but that was a that was a bear trap and it impulsively recovered and then broke to the upside. So this could be a break to the upside. A, you know, maybe we need a back test. What I would want to do is wait for a full back test to confirm that it's going to hold and then move higher. Um, but here's the thing that I don't like about these these uh, you know these pandemic stocks one of them might come out with a vaccine and maybe that is going to happen maybe none of them will actually have a vaccine i mean nobody knows really that a lot of that is just speculation but if one of them comes out with a vaccine then that stock will probably be the winner and all the rest are most likely going to be the losers uh you know so which one is it going to be i don't know and to me it just feels like you know you're kind of gambling and speculating on which one it might be when and the pro, your probability of picking the winner is really low because there's a lot of them trying to find the the vaccine so if you pick one uh you know yeah that will be you know you'll win big potentially on that one but what's the odds of picking that one you know one out of 25 really low odds and i don't like those odds so um yeah and yeah you can sprinkle some around to even your odds out but again i, I think one of them is going to be the winner and the rest are going to be the loser so loser so it to me it just you know you might win in the one and then lose in the others so i just don't really like them i stay away from them to me you know i don't like the specul you know the these the hot stocks like like pots to pot stocks back in 2018 you know yeah if you get in right at the right time and you buy when it's objective and everybody nobody really notices it and nobody's interested then yeah that, that you can hold those and ride those up but to ride to jump into the hype after something's had you know a huge move um, based on speculation seems a, it's just a little too much risk for me so that's all i got for this video guys and uh you know, again, everything in this video is just my opinion. So just uh, take it as such. I appreciate it. Catch you guys on the next one.